Welcome all, welcome to the C3 Let's Play Spree of 2014. As I was saying on the Super Mario World Central forums, I'm not just going to pl be playing Super Mario World ROM hacks or demos as such this time around. I want to actually mix it up a bit. And I found a really good reason to do so. What you're staring at is not a ROM hack, but I'm sure many people are going to be using it in future ROM hacks. It's a new tool someone made called Effect Tool. I've got a readme here just in case if I get confused. This tool made by Jack the Spades, I have a feeling it's really going to go far at this point. It may be a beta right now, but hey. Short info about HDMA. HDMA, I don't know what it stands for, but it allows you to put effects on the register. Okay, I'm just reading off the screen now. It pretty much allows you to apply gradients to your levels. Yeah, this is possible without such tools. This can be done in vanilla, but it's going to reserve like an entire palette row. And you can't really put it like over the background unless you do some editing to the graphics. You can only do it to like blank space. It's called fake e HDMA, like some sort of slang term. But applying HDMA apparently was harder in the past, and Jack the Spades is going to make it easier. Pretty much HDMA is gradient effects. For example, things like these apply to the backgrounds of levels. Or they could even be applied to foregrounds, like so. Yeah, things like that. That's what HDMA pretty much is. So what are we looking at? Apparently, you can use this tool to generate some HDMA code that you could insert as either an XCOS patch, an SR patch, ASR I think it's pronounced, or you could use it as a custom sprite to be inserted with sprite tool as a generator. Soon enough I should actually get into this. Yeah. You can insert it as a patch or I'm probably going to use a sprite tool generator option because I haven't really become familiar with either of these two, unfortunately. I'm going to see what happens. Rather than read this, I'm actually just going to play with it and see what I get. HDMA effects, background gradient. Ugh, boring black or one color. Ugh, get that shit out of here. So far, there's nothing much special, but hey, we're doing something. Not sure what happens if you change this. Apparently, CH3 is the default, so you should just leave it like this, I think. <laughs> oh, that's weird. If we want to make the HDMA f effect flip over the middle for some reason. Unless there's actually a reason to do this. So far, there isn't yet. I haven't found one. <laughs> Green looks weird with this, but I'm going to... Okay, there's not much we can do on a single channel. We can get gray if we... Or white if we mix all the colors together. We could get magenta if we mix blue and red. Yeah. Not much to be done here, but yeah, it's pretty cool so far. Multi channel. <laughs> so these are all separate channels now, so I guess you're gonna have a lot more freedom as to what you're gonna be doing for. Yeah, there's already a lot more I could. Yeah, we're already able to do a lot more with multi-channel than we are with single-channel. Like, yeah. I could totally imagine this kind of gradient being used in a future level. <laughs> oh my, I could totally imagine somebody wanting to use this in their level. <laughs> yeah, nice salmon sky. <laughs> I love this program already. And I've only gotten to this part of it. <laughs> yeah, I could totally use this on a level, you know. <laughs> Color dialogue. I don't know what this is. I don't know what... Maybe... Wait. You can create a gradient out of an image. <laughs> For example, you could load a screenshot of an SMW level and then pretty much just take the gradient off that if you want. I think you have to put some hex colors in there. I mean, these are like the best two looking things so far. Can't do a reset, so hey. <laughs> Foreground gradient. Again, multi-channel. Except we'll do single channel first, see what happens. We're going to start with blue. 
we pull this down, if we pull the reach down, then it's, if we put it to half, it's gonna, this is gonna reach about halfway down the screen. This is looking pretty already. I think we'll have another sort of reach. Oh, when we move this, we move the other one at the same time. Alrighty then. <laughs> Multi-channel. I'm sure we're going to be able to do a lot more here. This is the red one. Let's do this. Make it reach down about a quarter of the screen. We're going to do a darker green. Make it reach down about half the screen. Okay. It's partly orange up here. Partly yellow. Okay, mates. Let's say if we just put this further down. It'll be more... No, I want to make it part yellow, part green. Yeah, part yellow up there because we're mixing the red and the green and then we're losing our red and we're turning to green. Now let's throw some blue in here. Yeah, I'm falling in love with this tool already. Let's move it down here. Right near the top we should have white. Halfway down we should have cyan and at the very bottom green. Yeah. Pretty much just play with these colors until you find something you like. Then you could click the code button. Yes. Just a little note of importance. This code messes with the screens. Layer priority. Yeah, you know how piranha plants can disappear behind layer 2 and non-line guided grinders? Apparently what Jack is trying to say here is that if he uses HDMA, I think those sprites would disappear behind the HDMA. So, yeah, that's one thing so far. It's one oddity with the engine that we'd have to deal with. <laughs> then we're supposed to copy this code somewhere. The code is all generated. I don't even think you have to understand what any of this means, but it would be nice if you did, because, yeah, if you want to learn ASM, you should try and study this stuff anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, you've just seen that. Now what? brightness we can pretty much just do that if we want play around with that parallax I don't know what that is let's just skip it for now waves I'm pretty much just playing with the scroll bars and all that stuff that looks tough I'm just ignoring cuz okay now that looks, that looks actually pretty bad why these are the speed of the waves so it would actually have some sort of effect Maybe that doesn't work yet, the animation. <laughs> Windows. So I'm kind of hoping that if we do check the two boxes that say Mario, then this little window is going to follow Mario. So we'll be able to do the simple tiny box around Mario gimmick or tiny circle and everything else you can't see. So yeah, that gimmick could be easier to pull off. But look at this. You don't have to use just a circle. Hell, you could even make a window that's the shape of... Well, it's the shape of Mario's head by default. See, you load in a picture of Mario's head. Turns it to black and white, so this gets turned to that. It gets rendered there, and yeah. You could put in whatever image you want that's like white and then just... Yeah. I think the rest of the background has to be white, so I think it would kind of go like this. So yeah. This is wonderful, except that I haven't even tried to use it in a hack or a level yet, because, yeah. All I know is, I think this is going to go very far. I mean, right now, it's probably still in a beta phase, but hey. And those are just the gradients and stuff. You could read this readme on your own time to figure out how everything works. Or I could, because, yeah. I love this already, and I haven't even tried to use it yet. Like, seriously tried to use it. So, this is a really good start. Major thanks to you, Jack. I was able to turn this into this. Looks like this tool will definitely see lots of play in the upcoming future. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than this. I guess 
looking at non-SMW hacks content was a great idea. I mean, now I'm actually getting to see content that's not just going to be used in one hack, but is going to change the future of hacking and make it much better. When I say hacking, I mean Super Mario World hacking, not like actually breaking into PCs. 